Markets, our next guest says, if we were to see another hike, it could be a tipping point for the economy. Cambys Kazemi is Chief Investment Officer at Melita's Risk Management, advises clients uh, for $150 billion in assets. Uh, thanks very much for being with us. Nice to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks okay, uh, I guess I'll, I'll start with your own expectations for, for what the Bank of Canada may do next week. But, uh, listen, right now the market is pricing a 50-50 scenario is the coin toss. Uh, you know, ultimately this is a decision of the bank and the government and the, the committee. So, uh, you know, whatever we think, that's not going to be what matters most. But I want to give some context uh, with regarding uh, their decision. Lots of things have changed since the last time that they, you know, last time we went in it was a 40-60, 40, 40 to raise and they actually somewhat surprised the market by raising the rates. Uh, further to that, we had a new CPI number. So this new CPI number, uh, you know, was the lowest we had since June 2021. And uh, even though the bank uh, focused on the core CPI, which remains at 3.9 and is uh, the sticky story that is the, the worrisome, uh, there's some level of comfort that that has come down. Uh, the other uh, thing that is very important is unemployment numbers. So again, last time we had an unemployment, which was just a few days after the Bank of Canada made the decision. Uh, was the you know highest unemployment number since August uh, last year. So uh, it's a really difficult uh, balancing game. Uh, but the point that uh, you were mentioning about the tipping point that we have discussed and the risk that we have highlighted at mm -hmm. a number of times is uh, re regarding the leverage of the households. So Canadian households admittedly are very leveraged. Uh, you know, uh, debt to disposable income is about 1.8 times. Uh, but more importantly, we have a mortgage situation in Canada, which is very different than other countries. Oftentimes, uh, we tend to compare ourselves you know, to the U.S. market. But uh, what's very different in Canada is that uh, the duration of our mortgages are shorter. Uh, if you will, the Americans have locked in lower for longer. <laughs> and uh, that's not the case here. And there has been some concern even expressed by, uh, you know, or at least studies done by the Bank of Canada itself about what's called the trigger rate. So when you get to a point where your payment every month doesn't cover your interest right. uh, payment, so there's, uh, which, which we can see there. So as the rates go up, uh, three things can happen. Either you get a call from the bank and they tell you you have to raise your uh, monthly payments or you uh, lengthen your amortization. We have seen that happening by a number of banks up to 35, 40 years instead of the usual 25. Or uh, uh, the other thing that's happened and three of the Canadian banks offer that is what's called uh, negative amortization, i.e. you put back the interest you cannot pay in your principal. So none of these things is very good in the long run. <laughs> and the question is how do you, um, you know, measure the impact of those? Um, and, you know, the Bank of Canada put a paper out, that graph was uh, from there. So if we raise another, in our view, 50 beeps, uh, the, the you know, 0.5% accumulative, will be at about 80% of triggers on the variable mortgages. So that's a very high number. And these things usually work themselves out on the longer run, not immediately. So. Uh, you know, you can look at one quarter or two quarter. We're just kind of started. So those are the things that can tip, essentially, not necessarily immediately, but within a quarter or two, the picture as it lags. Um, and when you say tip, tip us into like a deep recession. But yeah, so that that's a very good point. I mean, it seems that everybody is aiming for a you know recession anyways to tame the inflation. Mm, yeah. The problem we have is that you know as long as and that's the measure that we look at very closely and I think everybody should pay attention is unemployment. So the other thing is as long as essentially you have a job, you be able to pay uh, you know your mortgage and you just shift a little bit your consumption habits. Uh, maybe you spend less on some things and you make good on the money you you owe. Uh, but once, if the unemployment market starts showing more weakness, then essentially, yes, you can have, a, you know, more uh, of a downside and surprise everybody on the, um, you know, abruptness of it. Yeah, I mean, so one of the issues so far is that people have spoken about not just the resilience of the economy, but the robustness of the labor force, which, and there are a number of factors in there, including immigration, which helped to support that. But um, many people will also note that um, the you know, the jobs picture, we're going to get some more on that this week, uh, is a lagging indicator. In other words, if we're looking at that future tied to variable rate mortgages, which you spoke to, or even people who are locked into mortgages over the next couple of years and then get that shock coming out of those fixed rate mortgages, we'll see it happens. So is it your message to the Bank of Canada that they should not raise rates next week? 
<laughs> Maybe. Uh, I think on the balance, when you look at the, you know, uh, CPI having come, you know, come down, yeah. and even, you know, even the core CPI, which is the preferred measure, now is below, uh, you know, 3.9 is way below the 4.75 rate. Um, and they have some room uh, for that. In fact, uh, you know, if you look at uh, a very similar situation was uh, Central Bank of Australia. Last night, the market went into a very similar situation. It was a 50-50. And what they did was a kind of a hawkish pause. So essentially, they didn't raise rates, but they sent a very hawkish message uh, as in, you know, we'll do it if the numbers change. So, um, you know, that could be a balanced uh, approach uh, for next week's Bank of Canada meeting.